Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be doing some equations past paper practice as well as quadratic inequalities, that's over here. Let's jump right in. Our first question says solve for x, this is solving for x question. Now as soon as you see a squared term like that, you need to think I must get this into standard form, which includes making this equal to zero. So we're going to have 3x squared plus 5x, opposite of plus 2 is minus 2 and descending powers of x. So the biggest exponent for x first, then the second biggest, and then this one has no x. Then to solve a quadratic equation, we need to factorize. So this is a trinomial. I'm not going to go over how to factorize tri trinomials in this video. I have videos on that, so check that out, link below. And then we take each bracket and make it equal to zero. The three x minus one is equal to zero, or x plus two will equal zero. So that means that x will be the negative one becomes positive one times three inverse operation is divided by three. So x is a third or x is negative two. So the four marks come from standard form, factorizing, and then each of your answers. My next question, also solving question, we can see x squared once again. So we know it's a quadratic equation. My first step is I need to get the equation into standard form. I need to make it equal to zero. Inverse operation of plus 10 is minus 10. We're going to make this equal to zero. Now, when the question says round the answer off to one decimal place or two decimal places or leave insert form, this is a very big hint that you're going to have to use the quadratic formula. The reason why is because you can't do a trinomial. You can't factorize here like normal. If you try, you will not be able to. So give it a go if you want, but you will come to the conclusion that you need to use a quadratic formula to solve this. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That is the quadratic formula. And remember, a is the value in front of the squared term. So it's the coefficient of x squared which in this case is 1, b is the coefficient and the sign in front of the x term, so negative 8, and c is the constant term, negative 10. So in order to get your marks, I want you to show me the substitution for the quadratic formula. So negative, negative 8, plus minus the square root, 4, no, sorry, b squared. So what is b? b is negative 8, negative 8 squared minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 10, all over 2a in the place of a is 1, just like that. And if you type that in on your calculator, you will use the plus sign. So this will be a plus to get your one solution, 9.1. Or you change this to a minus to get your other solution, negative 1.1. Remember, they wanted to one decimal place. That's why I've rounded off to one decimal place. Then 1.1.3. I've got an equation with a third or a square root equation or a root equation. So my first step when solving this type of equation is I need to isolate the root. So the inverse operation of minus one, because this is preventing the root from being by itself, opposite of minus one is plus one. Your next step is to square both sides. And I want you to show me on paper how you're squaring the left-hand side and how you are squaring the right-hand side. Remember, the quick way to think about this is the square and the square root cancel out. So you're left with x plus 7 on this side. When you expand this, you need to expand it properly. So the shortcut method is square the first term, so x squared. Square the last term, so 1. Multiply these two together, so x, and multiply that by 2, so 2x. If you do not understand the shortcut method, you need to know that when you square a binomial, you're writing out the bracket twice and you are doing the FOIL method. So essentially you get this, which is where the two X come from. People always forget when they're squaring this that there's a middle term over here. Then this is a quadratic equation. We need to make the equation equal to zero. So I've got two X and then the inverse of plus X is minus X, so plus X. And then one inverse of plus seven is minus seven. So one minus seven which is negative six, and that all equals to zero. Then my next step, this is a trinomial. I need to factorize that. There we go. I factorized the trinomial. So therefore, x is equal to two or x is equal to negative three. But when you have a square root equation or a basically a root over here or a third, we need to check our solutions. So you need to take your answers your solutions and put it in the place of x so you can do this on your calculator you don't have to write it out like i am i'm just showing you so that you do it correctly take two put it in the place of x so you have the square root of two plus seven minus one on this side you will get the square root of nine which is three minus one you get two and then if you put two over here you also get two so the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so this is correct 
But let's try the other solution. So in the place of x, we are going to put negative 3. So in the place of x, we're going to put negative 3. So it is going to be negative 3 plus 7. And then remember on the left-hand side here, it's minus 1. So minus 1. So that's going to be the square root of 4 minus 1. The square root of 4 is 2 minus 1. The left-hand side of this equation will equal 1. But the right-hand side of the equation will equal negative 3 because x is negative 3. And 1 doesn't equal negative 3. So the left-hand side doesn't equal the right-hand side. So this solution is not valid and you need to draw a line through it. So you get a mark for isolating the third, squaring both sides, getting it into standard form, factorizing, then a mark for both your answers and a mark for rejecting this as a valid solution. My next question looks like this. I'm just going to write it a little bit bigger so we can see it. Now, we are solving for x. The question still says solve for x. If you take a look at the left-hand side of the equation, we have two terms. So we know we can't actually do anything yet because we have a plus sign in between. We have two terms. So I hope that you know that you need to factorize. Now, sometimes it helps people to see this broken up like this. So I'm going to do it like that. So I didn't do anything to the green term. It stayed the same. But instead of 2 to the power of x plus 1, I said that's the same thing as saying 2 to the power of x and 2 to the power of 1. Just like that. And then 5 equals 8. Now, I'm going to factorize. So look at the yellow term and look at the green term. What can I take out as a highest common factor? 2 to the power of x. Open your leftover bracket. What must I multiply this by to get the green term? I hope you're saying 6. And then what must I multiply this by to get the yellow term? I hope you're saying 2 times 5. Okay, that's not 2.5. It's 2 times 5. 2 multiplied by 5. So... Now, what I can do is I can simplify what's going on in the brackets. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 6 is 16, and on the right-hand side of the equation, I have 8. So I'm trying to get the 2 to the power of x alone. I've got 8 over here. The inverse operation of times 16 is divide by 16. Okay, let's continue with the sum over here. So I've got 2 to the power of x equals 8 over 16, which is basically a half. Now you should know or remember that this 2 has an exponent of 1, 2 to the power of 1. If I move this upstairs, it's going to be 2 to the power of negative 1, and this is 2 to the power of x. Then the bases are now the same. We can drop the base, and x is equal to negative 1. So this question was worth 5 marks. You get 1 mark for the correct highest common factor, 1 mark for this bracket, 1 mark for simplifying, one mark for isolating x, so getting 2 to the power of x on one side of the equation, and then one mark for our final answer, so 3, 4, 5. My next question actually contains a quadratic inequality, because we cannot see an equal sign here, but rather a less than sign. It's an inequality. So let's first solve this quadratic inequality, and then we will revisit the question. Don't let the question confuse you. Think about this as its own separate question, and then once we've completed or worked through how to get this inequality, then we'll come back and revisit the question. So it's in standard form. It's zero is on the one side of the equation. We now need to factorize this. There we go. So that means that my critical values, and I do want you to write out your critical values because even if you mess up the answer, you still get a mark for critical values. So if I were to make this bracket equal to zero, x would be six. And if I were to make this bracket equal to zero, x would be negative three. So negative three and six are my critical values. And most teachers show you how to plot that on the parabola to help you. So it would be negative three and it would be six. This is a parabola. Okay, parabolic function, a parabola. It is a happy parabola because this coefficient of x squared is positive. Positive, happy. Positive is to be happy. And I'm looking at where is x squared minus 3x minus 18. Where is this? Less than zero. And remember what I told you, if this was a y-axis, all the y values, so basically where's y less than zero? All the y values that are less than zero would be down here below the x-axis. This would be all the values where y is less than zero, so negative. Up here would be where all the y values are bigger than zero, so positive. So I, in my answer, care about it going from here to here, okay? So basically, I care about all the x values that way and all the x values that way. And now how I teach this is, do you see how I've highlighted one loop? So it's going to be one answer with x in the middle, the smallest critical value over here, the biggest critical value over there, x must be bigger than negative 3, but x must be less than 6. Think about it. x must be bigger than negative 3. So, for example, any of these values. So, for example, if x is negative 2, then this, is, this will work. Think about it. 
If you choose a value that is bigger than negative three, but smaller than six, so negative two, so somewhere over here, and you sub it in to inequality over here, you get the value of negative eight, which is less than zero. So X must be bigger than negative three. So you read that this way. X is bigger than negative three. You read it that way. But X must also be less than six. Yeah, that is five, that is four, that is three, that is two, so less than six. So I like to draw these arrows because it helps me, it helps show that all of these x values need to be included in my inequality. And like I said, because I've got one loop over here, I'm going to have one answer. If I ended up highlighting this part here and this part here, that would be one, two loops. So I would have two answers, not two answers, but two separate pieces for my inequality. Like X is bigger than this and smaller than, you know what I mean? Okay. Another thing that's very helpful to remember when you do an inequality like this is if your answer is one loop, like mine is, your little crocodiles, these things, which I call crocodiles, must face the same way. Okay. They must face the same way. And I don't make these signs equal to signs. Like I don't put equal twos over there. No, I do not. Why not? Because the question doesn't have equal to. Okay, it's just like that. Now, back to the question. List all the integers that are solutions. Our solutions fall inside of this little interval over here. So from where x is negative 3, but not including negative 3, because there's no equal sign over here. So from negative 3, but not including negative 3. And stopping at 6, but not including 6. So basically... Everything that goes this way. So think about the number line. What is bigger than negative three, but smaller than six? I hope you're telling me negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. We stop at negative two. We don't include three because this does not have an equal to sign. And we stop at five. We don't include six because of the same reason. And they want me to list all the integers. So there we go. I've listed them. So you get a mark for factorizing. You get a mark for your critical values. So I always just like to write them over there as well. But if you just wrote them down here as part of your inequality, that's also fine. You get a mark for notation. So did you give me one solid answer like that? Not two little separate pieces. So X must be in the middle. You must use the signs in the correct order, etc. And then two marks for the answer. One mark minus one mark for every mistake. Now I've got solve for X and Y simultaneously, simultaneously, and they give me two equations. Remember your first step in simultaneous equations is pick one of the equations and make one of your variables the subject of the formula. So I'm personally going to choose this first equation and I'm going to make Y the subject of the formula. So I'm using the substitution method. So Y will stand by itself. Inverse of minus 2X is going to be plus 2x. So I've just rearranged my first equation, making y the subject of the formula, y is standing by itself. Rewriting the second equation so you can see it nice and big. Now what substitution means, that's my second equation, is we take y, so what, what y is equal to, 2 plus 2x, and in the place of every y in this equation, we will be putting 2 plus 2x. So instead of y over here, you will be substituting 2 plus 2x. And remember to do so with brackets. So sub 1 into 2. So x squared minus 2x equals 3 minus, use brackets, 2 plus 2x. So instead of y, I'm writing 2 plus 2x. Then I simplify. So let's expand. Drop the 3 down. Negative gets multiplied into the brackets. Negative 2x. Negative 1 multiplied by 2x is Oh, sorry, that should be negative multiplied by 2 is negative 2. And negative multiplied by 2x is negative 2x. And now you can see we've got x squared. So I hope you're thinking, oh my goodness, as soon as I see an x squared, I know that it is a quadratic equation. I need to make it equal to 0. So x squared, negative 2x plus 2x. Oh, it goes away. And then negative 3 plus 2. So negative 1. And then we need to factorize this. So this is the difference of two squares, x plus one, x minus one. I hope you know dots by now. Two terms, a minus in between, square numbers. So I can square root one. It gives me one. That's where these ones come from. And even exponents. x times x gives me x squared. Right. So then we can say that x, therefore, equals negative one or x is equal to positive one. So there's two solutions for x, which means we're solving simultaneously. There will be two solutions for y. So I'm going to take that initial equation that I got where I isolated y. I'm just going to write it over here in a bubble so you can see. y is equal to 2 plus 2x. So to solve for y in the place of x, I'm going to put negative one over here. And in the place of x for this one, I'm going to put positive one. 
So on this side, I get 2 minus 2, so y would be 0. And on this side, I get y is 4. So where x is negative 1, y is 0, or where x is positive 1, y is 4. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in another video for more past paper practice.